Okay, I guess we're on. So welcome to my session on about Office 365 groups and how to use them. Uh, but before I start, uh, I want to take a picture of y'all. So if you could raise your hands and say, way. Thank you. And I'll do one at the end and see if the enthusiasm is as big afterwards, right? So uh, my name is Mikael Svensson. Uh, I'm a principal consultant at a company called Puzzle Part based in Oslo, Norway. Uh, do 365 consultancy and SharePoint. Been doing SharePoint since 2003. I'm also a SharePoint uh, uh, MVP. And also do a PTSP role with Microsoft. That means they can use me in customer meetings for free, basically. And hopefully we'll get a lead. So that's short about me. Um, so let's kick this off. Um, so I figured uh, just a small introduction. So this is the seventh group session of the day. Uh, so um, I'm guessing you already know what a group is, uh, but I'll cover just some basics, uh, uh, what, what's in groups. And then uh, I'll do four demos afterwards. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right away, one of the demos is not complete, and I'll let you know when I get there. So, but that's, that's how it works with groups. Things are rolling out constantly and new features are uh, coming, coming all the time. Uh, if you, by any chance, uh, walk out during the session, or you're bored or fall asleep, here's the takeaways. You can use groups for a, a wide variety of collaboration scenarios. Uh, if you use team sites before, you can use groups, shared calendars, you can use groups. So if you haven't started using them, start, start today. I mean, they're, they're ready for most scenarios anyways. Right. OK. So what are Office 365 groups? So this is a question uh, and a discussion I've had numerous times uh, uh, the past year. Like, what is a group? Well, at, um, and spe uh, especially for SharePoint people, a group, uh, when you start talking to, to the security party, you have security groups, permission groups. So what is a group? So like, technically, it's an Azure AD group. That's a back end. Uh, but what does that really mean? So I try to just sum it up as this, like, is a is group functionality for a group of people. Uh, that might also be fuzzy, but it's about you're taking functionality from the best of breed services and bringing them together for a group of people to collaborate. So, I mean, so we have SharePoint. You use files, pages, and also li uh, list items is coming, uh, since we're now getting the modern team site for a group. So you can use that uh, if that's your entry point. We have OneNote, which is also stored in SharePoint to take your notes. And then Outlook for conversations and a shared calendar. And then we have Planner, if you want to do your tasks. So much better than the SharePoint task, which doesn't really scale. More is coming there. And then we have Power BI for visualizing whatever data you have. Might be your scenario for using a group. And now also Yammer integration, which recently been announced. So that's my introduction to what groups are. So you're taking the best of breed from all these different services. So uh, my w wish is that maybe video stream might be part of it, right? Maybe you can have a, if, if Sway came with channels, maybe you could have a Sway part in there. So there's all these services being rolled out, which we can hook into, hook into groups. And that takes us over to demos. So that was my short introduction. So I'm not going to keep you long today, but uh, I have time for a lot of questions. Uh, so my first scenario, uh, which I call the calendar. Uh, so this is by, uh, you have an event, um, uh, you can have a recurring meeting, whatever. So, this, so, so that the time of the date is sort of um, at the epicenter. So that means you can use a calendar for scheduling, OneNote to keep your agenda, or if you want to have a list, you can do that as well. Uh, do workshop notes, meeting notes, et cetera. And then you can have conversations about this event before and after. So my demo is uh, something called Puzzle Friday. So Puzzle Friday is an event we have at our company every six to eight, eight weeks. It's an internal event where we go over what's been happening for the past past month, uh, house business, what's going on in Office 365 world, et cetera. So I'll 
I'll just show that. So if I switch monitor over here. So let's see. Okay, so this is how Puzzle Friday used to be. So this is a team site with a meeting workspace, right? Uh, so every time we had a new event, you see in the URL, so this is one from November 2015. We have the agenda as a list. Uh, we link to some different documents. So here's the document uh, in the file library here, which is this one. Someone linked to a blog post. Uh, so if we go over to the notebook, let's see, that's kind of empty because all the notes were happening on a whiteboard. And then after the event, they were all forgotten. That happens. So let's see, do we have any other artifacts? No. So that's basically, let's, if we look at the task list, might be some tasks. Yeah, decide, confirm venue. Well, you see, no one's actually, actually checked off these tasks. So someone put the tasks in. Uh, they're probably being done since we, we had the event. <laughs> it's an internal event, so, but so it, not, not very much, right? So if we go over to how we do Puzzle Friday right now, so this is a Puzzle Friday group. So here's a new site homepage. So here's a couple of documents. So this is a September update. That's the management update what's been happening. And here's my Svensson report where I sort of, from the last event up until this one, I go through all the blog posts from Microsoft and whatever, all, all the news and gather it in a report and digest it for everyone else. And if we go to the, uh, the OneNote, Loads up. So let's do September. So here we have one section per, um, per event. So here's the agenda. Just filled out in, in, in OneNote. Uh, we have some, some comments here, like pluses and minuses. Uh, we, have, we had a World Cafe se session, did the notes, etc. So that means that we just use the OneNote. Everyone co contributes at the same time in OneNote during the event. So, so nothing is really lost. So that works, works out a lot better. And then if we go back to the, um, let's look at the calendar and conversation part. So if I go to calendar, to conversations here. Let's see, Puzzle Friday. Yeah, so here you see there's been some posts, someone shared a document. Uh, here's the announcement for new events being like, do you have audio video? So this was actually, since I was in the office and everyone else was off at a remote site uh, having, having fun on this event, but I couldn't go, so I was sitting alone in the office. So I needed audio video, right? So that was something happening here. And here's for uh, like planning for the Christmas dinner. And then Twitmo says, well, I need gluten-free food because he's, uh, he's got allergies. So here's some conversations going on before and after the event. And then if we look at the calendar, Let's just close. That's my calendar. Uh, there's Puzzle Friday calendar. And if you're wondering why my calendar is filled up, it's because we're using the calendar as a timesheet. So if I work eight hours a day, that's, that's a full block. Like this. Yeah, so we had Puzzle Friday, this uh, second of September. See, and then should be, yeah, here's one planned in December. So basically, it's instead of sending out an invite every time, uh, before, uh, as we did before to everyone, now we'll just add it to the calendar, to the group's calendar. So that's briefly how that, any questions? Right. And it didn't work. Is it supposed to work, or is that just am I doing something else? No. So what happens when you add a calendar event to a group? Everyone will actually get an invite. Like everyone who's in the group should get an invite to that event. Through. We, yeah. So so you will actually so you will get it in your own calendar as well. Like since you sort of accept the meeting. Okay. So the email didn't go out. So there was okay. Something. I, I'm. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Is that data in the email then being backed up? 
One more time. Yeah. So they will be backed up in the same way Office 365 does backup. So I'm, uh, that will, I guess that means if I delete it, I can't call someone to just get it back. That means if you want, if you want like full granularity on backup, that means either in SharePoint or Exchange, you need some third-party solution to actually back up everything. Right? So it might be in my trash can if I delete it. Well, it might be, may, it might be in there's. Well, you don't really have a recycle bin in Exchange like you do for SharePoint. So yeah, so then then you need something else to actually to, to get it back. Yeah, so the group itself, uh, at least from the storage perspective of files, I know we can get back. Uh, I'm not sure about all the other parts. Yeah. Uh, I know there was a session previously today, and there's one tomorrow as well on administration of groups. So you might want to attend those and look at those to get, get more information. Okay. That's wrong. So that was the Puzzle Friday demo. Second demo is um, communication and marketing. So this is centered around activities. I mean, maybe we have ad campaign, we're planning some customer activities, uh, our, what's happening on our public web pages, when are we doing uh, articles and blog posts. So, I mean, so we'll have the calendar for, for, uh, for event dates and deadlines, and then we have conversation discussions for uh, internally what's happening um, on, on those events. I mean, I can send an email, so what's happening, for example, with SharePoint Site Oslo, are we sponsoring it? And then everyone who's sort of in the event space at our company can see what's going on. Uh, you can also do email subscriptions. And uh, there's still email newsletters going on. And I know our marketing department, which is one guy, he subscribes to some of them. And those, email, those newsletters are coming into this group, not to his e email. And then we're now. Uh, where we have external access. So we did use the email box uh, for vendors as well. So instead of them emailing a, a specific person, they could email the group. So that means everyone who had a visibility to this group could actually see whatever emails uh, come in. And then we have one note with some different notes on vendors, different venues we're using. And then actually the heart of the communication is planner. Um, so uh, we're like, who does what? Uh, so, so, so I'll show this, show this as well, right? Okay. And then, share, and then SharePoint for files, where previously we had uh, a lot of collateral, like logos, etc., uh, stored in Dropbox, and we now move that into the into the, uh, this Office group. It's easier access because uh, every time I need a logo, I never remember the password for the Dropbox. Much easier to just have it within the same space. You want to go back so you can take another photo? <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> and the slides are available as well. If, if you log in, yeah, either through the portal or if you go to the uh, Microsoft Tech Community, all, all slide decks are, I think it's been there all day actually. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a demo called Puzzle Comms. So, so this is the, the files view. So here we have a folder for events. We have some banners uh, and some, some pictures. There are some assets uh, available. And then if we go to, let's go to the conversation part first. So I'm sort of, I think the navigation groups could probably improve since you, I mean, you can navigate here, but I don't have the home page right now here, unless I go directly to it. And then conversations is up in the right hand corner. So you sort of need to know where to actually click to, uh, to get to all the different resources. So here you see there's some RSS feeds coming in. Um, and there's a tweet, tweet there as well. Let's see if I can. Okay. Some more. 
Here's some uh, emails and here's some events coming in, which were planned, etc. So this is all coming into the group. And then if we go to the calendar, see, why does it default to my calendar? When I did this earlier today, I'm sure it showed both. Let's see, communication. Let's see if that was it. Yeah, so here's Ignite. That's happening right now. And then I think we should have, yeah, so here's a conference, European SharePoint conference, et cetera. So all the events which Christian, our marketing guy, is having something to do with is in this calendar. And then I'll go to the OneNote. Just to show that. Yeah, so here's min of meetings, plan strategy, what's happening web, campaign, just all different different things he's working on, and he, he adds notes here. So if we go to IDs, I haven't checked this, so hope this is all right. Yeah, here. here's a couple of campaigns he's got, got some ideas for. All written down here, so that works. Okay, and then for the final piece, so let's go to um, Planner. Okay, no Planner link from there. So let's see if we can some planner from here. Something went wrong. Okay. So let's do, try this one. Yep, that worked. Just go directly to tasks. So here's our marketing board. So here's uh, the, what needs attention, content activities, events happening, admin routines, tools, infrastructure. So just created different bins for different kinds of activities, different buckets. Then of course you can assign it to see progress instead. So you're not started in progress and what's been completed. So all, all very useful. And I think if a feature coming to Planner, which I'm looking forward to, is actually being able to assign a task to multiple people. That happens. It's not always just one, one person responsible. Okay. Any questions on this scenario? Is it useful? Yeah, there's a question back there. So they will not get a calendar invite for previous events, but for, for the new ones. But they do have access and visibility in there. So they could go in and, and look at the calendar and then add it themselves. Um, but that would be very useful in it. I don't think they will get, get future invites automatically. So maybe if you, if you open it and resave it, it might, might add. So I'm not sure. Something to be tested. Good question. <laughs> Any other questions? Yep. Is it yeah, so Yeah, so in theory, I should have had a link here to planner. Okay. So in some of the pages that actually shows up. So I, I haven't figured out exactly when and why. Mm -hmm. So it depends sort of but I get, I hope that's something which will be fixed. So there should have been a planner link there. Yeah. I yeah, ideally. Uh, it might be if I go, so I can try if I go to, let's see, side pages, let's see if there's, let's go to the home page. Right. Let's see, we got planner here now. No. Nope. Yeah. And then when I was on documents, I didn't see this home button either, right? So there, there's, there's still some gaps, and uh, I mean, this was rolled out not, uh, I mean, modern sites pages were rolled out like two, one or two weeks ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then go to planner from there. Planner sure. Through yeah. And yeah, and that's sort of what I did when I just did, did the URL, just went to tasks.com instead. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. 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 Ye
Question in the back? So, so the question was, what, uh, what security level are people who are added to the groups? So what, what kind of permissions do they get, get in the group? So what happens is, when, when you add a person to the group, they're getting added to that Azure Active Directory group. And that group on the SharePoint side for files is added into contributors. That means you can create uh, and read items, just like a contributor. So that's what happened behind, behind the scenes. No, so there's right now there's no like read only different access. So, so but I yes, it's a good question. Should you have just just readers into a group, or when you're a group of people and you're collaborating, usually everyone contributes, right? So do you find yourself doing a lot of scenarios where you limit people to just read access, or? Right, yeah, yeah. So uh, I know that on OneNote for classbooks, they've done different permission stuff. So the teacher can just can edit some of the pages where the students can't, but they can both read. So might might be that, they're, that they'll do something else. I guess if, if enough people uh, want it, they might add it. Question back. Well, so right now, if you share with an external person, they either need a O365 account or a live account. So, I mean, so if they don't have a live account, when, when you send that uh, external invite, they will get an option when they click it to sign up. But they don't need to have a No, 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 no. So, so a, li a, li a live account works. Okay, so I'll switch over to this one again. So this is my uh, like to do lightweight social uh, social media support. So this is the demo which doesn't work completely. So 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 the idea here is to get a Twitter feed into the group, which works just fine. Uh, but then so my idea was okay. So you, you get you get the Twitter feed in, and then you want to reply internally and then get an automatic tweet out without going to Twitter to tweet it out. Um, it is doable, but you have to do some programming. So with the current just configuration parts, uh, it's impossible to, to do. And you can't, um, so I tried using Flow. Uh, if someone's seen my Twitter handle day, I had like multiple tweets on this session, session key and then, does this work, does this work? Final testing, I won't test anymore. Okay, I'm doing one more test. <laughs> and it just doesn't work. Uh, there's some missing pieces. Uh, and you also, in order to use Flow, which you can hook into a mailbox. So I used a shadow mailbox, which was part of the group. That means all the group conversations coming in. And then the shadow mailbox has the flow to actually tweet it back out. But it doesn't work. So, but if you have a programmer, you can use something called the webhooks. So uh, you can attach a webhook on the, on the emails uh, in the group. That means when an email or when a tweet comes in through the connector, you get an event and then you can, you can pick up that uh, tweet and then you can do something. So, uh, but, but what does work? I mean, you can still have, get the tweet in, you can do an internal uh, conversation saying, okay, I have replied to this tweet, you don't have to, maybe you want to discuss uh, <clears throat> What's, what should the response be before you actually send it out? So you can at least do some internal discussions before you, before you do the tweet. Uh, or you could also do an Outlook add-in, like in an extra pane, to do the actual tweet. So if I switch back. So this is my Twitter support group. Uh, so if anyone tweets either with at BRK2277 or hashtag, that should come in here right now. Uh, and then my idea was, okay, so here, it's cool, I say, well, so tweet, that's cool. So if I could just grab, if the reply starts with tweet, 
then tweet whatever's coming next. Get a programmer. And I am a programmer, but I don't want to program. I want to It's so much easier to configure <laughs> when it works. So what I use here is the connector part. So I'll just show how I'll set up the tweet. So you've got a bunch of connectors down here. Right? It's a pretty long list. If we just look at the configuration for this one, it says like get tweets from this tweet, uh, this account, which contains the. That was not a tweet. That was just a reply coming into one of my mailboxes. Yeah. So that that could work. I mean, I could have a pane to the right hand side here, which uh, to allow me to tweet. Again, get a programmer. I mean, all the APIs are, are there. You just need to piece them together. So hopefully we will get enough function, or we can. My, I hope that we can do a, hook a flow to a group to the emails, and get get that back out with all all different actions you need. Okay, and then let's go back. And then the last demo edu edu for education. So some of you might have been to a session earlier today which was about using groups in uh, educational space, where they talked about staff-to-staff -staff communication, teacher-to-student, or having expert groups across different, uh, different uh, learning organizations. It means you could have a professor in one university, a professor somewhere else, and they can all collaborate. Uh, yeah. So that's all fine. But for me, I mean, I, I don't work in the educational space, but I'm a parent. So my son started first grade last year. Uh, we do get a lot of communication from the school. So they have, uh, have a, some other vendor created a school portal. So that means every now and then I get an email saying, you have a new message. OK. So then I need to click that. Well, well actually, there's no clicking. I have to go to the school page, and I need to log in with my government ID, go in all the latest posts, and then I need to open that, and then there's a message inside. So very cumbersome to actually get what's happening. And usually what's being posted, is, well, it's a new weekly schedule. So what if I could create a group which will follow my son, like all, t all the 10 first years of school? Because he, he will go to the same school for, for 10 years. So I created a group, called, a group called Class of 2026 which they could just invite all the parents. I mean, I guess all parents, if they don't have an Office 365 account, they probably have a live ID, or they can get one. And then, if, if I need to email all the parents, send an email to the group. Or if I have a question to some of the other parents, I could just email that group. Uh, very easy. And then, uh, I can have a OneNote with the birthday of all the kids, so I can know, okay, when's the next birthday party is probably coming up. If I need to contact some of the parents, uh, or maybe someone started, well, just last, uh, last week, new people started in this class, and the school year started uh, a month or a month and a half ago. Right? Then you need an updated sheet with all, with all the contact information. And then they could do the weekly schedules and uh, documents or PDFs easily download, downloadable. Right? Maybe they do some photos when they're on trips. Store that as well. And the advantage, if this is possible, right? to have a group for 10 years is, I mean, you have history. That means if new students come in, uh, they can see what's been going on. If, if a new teacher takes over the class, they can say, well, who, who was in the class last year? That, so you have, the, you have the full history. So let's do a demo on this one. OK, let's close this. I go to my class of 2026. So here's some. So this is uh, uh, the weekly schedule for week 38, which I uploaded uh, just as a quick link here. And then here's some information about uh, activities happening after after school for my kid. Very useful, right? And then if I go to the note I created. So I try to do a section per year. So now we're in 2016. So if we're going to like, here's a page. Contacts for, for the students and the guardians with their name, when's their birthday, 
Who's their parent? What's their email address? What, what are the information people are comfortable sharing? So it will be the same information that they actually have in a sheet of paper, which we get, uh, get once a year now, but which is not updated. Then you might have some contacts at school, like who's the homeroom teacher, who does gymnastics, like who, who are all these uh, teachers involved with, with, the, with the class. Uh, here, I also added the entry for the school, like main number, here's the logo for the school. Uh, they also have some learning resources, they're using external websites for different, uh, different, uh, different homework, which I have a, have a login, I always forget the login, it could be here, so I can just go back into the OneNote, so I don't have to keep it in my own OneNote. I'm sure others ask the same thing, because it, it was printed on the weekly schedule a week, maybe 21, right? So that's, then they need to go back to all these old weekly schedules to get that piece of information. We could have the vacation holidays listed here, or that could be added uh, in a calendar, but the calendar does not have an external view for external right now. I mean, well, if you add an event, they will get an email with the event, but they can't view the calendar as you can internally. And then when there's parent-teacher meetings with everyone in there, and usually some parent has to take notes, and then that's being sent to the teacher, who sends it out to all the parents afterwards. Well, what if we could just Take notes. This is this is what we do in all our meetings, anyways, right? And, and the thing is, uh, the, the schools in Oslo already have Office 365, so they could do this. If I can just get some business there, telling them how to do this, possibly. And then, so I'll, I'll just show. So say there's a new weekly schedule, right? So if I go to uh, conversations. So I upload a new weekly schedule. I want to let all the parents know, well, there's a new weekly schedule you need to download for your kid. So we could, okay, new conversation. Here's the new schedule. And then click paperclip, insert file, pick the group. Let's pick the folder. And here's a folder for our schedules. So let's do like week 28. Next, and I can either send it as an attachment, which might be convenient, or I can just send it as a sharing link like this. Send. So, so if you look at the members, you see I have different uh, accounts. So I should now I get an email to my Gmail account, which has a live ID. Hopefully, let's see if that's being updated. Yep, here's the new schedule. I can click the link, which takes me straight in, and I can print it or save it. Very much, so much easier where I have to log in and log in, etc. I mean, this is not very, I don't need my government ID to log in to get this. It should be sensible, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Does someone have, yeah? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so if you're an external invited user, uh, can you do offline sync? Good question. So let's see if I, so now I'm through my Gmail account. Um, there's no, no sync buttons, so I, uh, I guess not. So, yeah, there, yeah. So I should ideally have another computer to try this since my OneDrive is all to the other account. So I'm not sure it might just sync automatically. So yeah, maybe it will. You should try and let us know. You can just follow, just type it in the conversation on the tech, tech community on this session afterwards. Or maybe I'll try it. That's a good one, yeah? But why, why do you want uh, offline sync on this content, do you think? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. 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 
But, but if you think like, like most of the communication information would be in a OneNote, that certainly can be, uh, be hooked, like, because you just sync the OneNote to whatever OneNote application you're already using, and you will have the uh, OneNote tied in. Right. And the summary, same as what I started with. You can use it for a lot of different scenarios. I showed four. One which was a bit incomplete, and there's, uh, there's others as well. And then you should start using them today. Um, so this was the seventh session of the um, group session today. Here's all the others. So there's uh, one, two, three tomorrow, and then one, two, four on Thursday, and there's one on Friday. Ask us anything about it. If you have like, any random question about groups, you should go to that one on Friday, uh, if you can't uh, ask the, uh, on one of the others. Uh, if you go to the technical community, there's feedback there. If you go to uh, AKMS 0365 groups. Also, uh, if you go to the tech community, the, there's a thread going on for each session. You can, you can do comments. So that's uh, all I had. So we can do, we can do a Q&A. Well, so when you, when you, yeah, so the question was when do you want to use groups instead of straight SharePoint? So to me, straight SharePoint now is groups because I, you probably mean team size, right? Or, yeah. yes. Because all groups will now have a team site. There's not like, a team site will get a group. Uh, if we wait just long enough, I know in the Microsoft tenant, if you order a new team site, you will get a group. So, so groups are sort of, team site v next or version two if you want. That's something I've, I've thought of that uh, for a long time, uh, ever since it was rolled out. But where the team site is sort of the landing page, you, so you went to the team site and you had functionality, and now you have functionality spread all across, tied into a sort of loosely typed group. Uh, but, but, I mean, team sites have a lot more governance around it? Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of people want, I mean, you want to do different classifications, and as the gentleman asked earlier, different permissions, et cetera. Um, and you can still do that in SharePoint, because on the, on the team side, all the functionality is there. It might not be exposed in the UI right now, but at least programmatically, you can do everything you, you, uh, you want with governance. Some more coming out with, like, how do you name a group, who can create groups, uh, who should be, uh, can you enable external sharing, et cetera, et cetera. But I would say any scenario where you're thinking about using just a team site, you might as well go for a group. Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yes, I know, yeah. And that's. Uh, and wondering, uh, that, that's some, I also want metadata. I mean, at least a little bit of metadata. Uh, and it's uh, the endless question about getting metadata on your documents. Like, and, and all like sync, uh, sync experiences right now, you won't get metadata. I mean, you had it in SharePoint Workspace, but now like, if you sync, like, using any tool except like the SharePoint list itself or a library, you don't see the metadata. So, but if you go, if you go to the document library, and you, you, you should be able to add columns, and you can see the columns, right? More work on the mobile app. More work on the mobile app. Groups versus pajamas for the Yeah, so uh, if you attended sessions earlier today, you uh, might have heard that they, okay, you can integrate a Yammer group with a, with a Okay, I tend to call them group groups because I hate all these like groups. So you can you can have a Yammer group with an O365 group, that, and then you, then you will have to choose: do you want your conversations in Exchange or in Outlook, or do you want to have them in Yammer? But you will still have the email address. So you, so that means if you choose to use Yammer, and someone sends an email to the group, that will be a conversation going on in Yammer. Uh, but then uh, they're also working on to get all the files stored in the Yammer group will then be in SharePoint. 
So it's sort of the so you're sort of switching out the uh, the conversation part. So when would I have a benefit for switching out? So when would you use Yammer versus the other Outlook? Uh, right now, I think I think conversations work better in Yammer. I think just the flow it works better right now than does an Outlook. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I think the threading is better. Um, if you if you want to have best, like daily digest, you can have. I think they they are better in Yammer. So yeah, I think Yammer works better for larger and longer discussions than what's currently in Outlook. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Question over there. No, so you will get a site collection under slash sites with that name, and that's it. Yeah. And I, I think it's actually hidden. If you, if you view, view all the site collections admin, you won't see the groups there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so it's, it's a regular site collection, but that, that's the SharePoint part of it, right? But then you have all the other pieces. So it's all, all hooked in Azure Active Directory. No, so I haven't done that, but I know there was a so there was a hackathon for the new SharePoint framework, and I know there was a team there who actually created a web part, surfacing group information into a web part from different parts. So you can certainly do that because APIs are available, but there's no out of the box web part right now. I'd like to do a group dashboard. Okay, lot less people. <laughs> well, thank you.